welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on, ah, uh, get excited guys, the long-awaited swatch blanket of 2021. What is a swatch blanket I hear you ask? Now let me talk about it just quickly. <laughs> to anyone joining us new, firstly welcome, secondly you have joined at just the right time. Our swatch blanket is going to consist of 25 squares 20 centimeter or eight and a quarter inches i think or something like that or just on eight inches uh, of each square now don't stress if each one of your squares are a little bit bigger than mine your blanket can be a little bit bigger if it's a little bit smaller your blanket can be just that tiny bit smaller just remember to make each square pretty much the same size in fact you really should make all squares the same size having said that from uh, top to bottom, this square does measure exactly 20 centimetres, which is 8 inches and a tiny little bit, um, or we'll just say roughly 8 inches. But from side to side, it's like a centimetre over. Okay, now this yarn is, woo, very stretchy yarn, and I'll explain the yarn in a minute. So if by any chance you made your square out of all 25 squares, you made one square a centimetre bigger. In this yarn I'm not sure for those of you overseas but in this yarn you can actually wash and block with me at the end when we're ready to wash and block each square to the size of your largest piece and that will help us uh, crochet I believe we're going to be crocheting I'm going to put it down as crocheting at the moment I haven't decided how we're going to join the pieces yet so we will be doing all of these squares okay hopefully all the same size if it's a tiny millimeter out or something like that don't stress we can wash and block to suit your largest square however if your largest square is two and a half centimeters or five centimeters or three inches four inches out that's too much try to make them pretty much the same size even if it's a tiny little bit out like it's a tiny tiny little bit out um you can deal with that we can work that work through that okay that's that uh, you will need your yarn now the yarn I'm using today is a yarn called spot saver USA now I'm not sure um, I'm actually quite sure it's the same as the American version of your spot saver over in the USA but I'm not sure what that is overseas but it does call for a size five millimeter hook now whenever I use a five millimeter hook it normally means it's a 10 ply yarn or a number four overseas or an Aran weight if you if you if you like um, so it's not the thinnest yarn but it's it's not super thick but it's thick enough if that makes any sense so just remember to find a yarn that suits a five millimeter hook because that is what you'll need and you will need your scissors you will need a darning needle sewing needle I can't show you that close up it doesn't matter you'll see it in the tutorial um, you'll have two ends to weave in with this particular piece. You will need two stitch markers, safety pins, thread, uh, hair pins, whatever you have in stock. It doesn't have to be fancy, okay? You don't have to have anything, you know, over the top. Now, I've got a pen in there. You won't need a pen. Now, why have I got a tub? Mm, because you're going to put all of the items you need in a tub. Now, if by any chance, you use the same thing for all of your work and you can't put it all in the one tub and you need it for your other projects that's fine but this is the way i'm going to do it okay everything's going to go in that tub then when i make a swatch we won't be washing and blocking that swatch straight away we're going to pop it in a plastic bag because this is going to be handled uh all year this is going to be one i'm sorry let's try two two or three swatches a month which means by the time we start doing it in December, you want to make sure your swatches and everything is all in the same box. So at the end of the year, we can grab our little box or our packet or a bag or whatever you have at home. Plastic bag is fine even. You know, if you want to put it all in one big plastic bag or one handbag that you get from your supermarket, your local supermarket, yeah? Anything you have, pop them all in there. Remember where you put your um, gear, yes? And if you like, put a cover or cover it so that dust doesn't get in it and dirt and all sorts of yucky things. Now, 
How many grams will you need? I'm hearing you ask that straight away. I know you're asking that. Now, that square there took me 25 grams of yarn. Now, I'm not sure what that is in metres or yards. I could probably do a bit more homework in the future and let you know. Uh, but 25 grams, 25 to 30 grams per square. And we are doing 25 squares. So do your maths, find out how many you will need. It's a rough 25 to 30 grams, yeah? This one's 25. But we may do another swatch where the stitches are a bit more intricate um, and you'll need more yarn for it, okay? So just keep that in mind, you know. I know that some of the swatches will call for 25 grams and some of them will call for 30. I don't think we'll go over 30. We might go 35, but don't quote me on that either. And that's about it really, guys. If there are any other questions, please let me know um, and leave a comment in the comment section down below. In the description box down below, I'll leave some details right up the top of what we are using today. I'll also leave some information for you regarding um, some of the stitches we may be using throughout the swatch blanket. Not all of them, just for the next few months, so that I, you know, I haven't done them all yet, <laughs> as you do. Um, so I'll be able to put some of the stitches in that description box down below for you. How much yarn will you need to join your squares together and do your final few rounds around the whole piece once they're joined and a border? I haven't decided that yet. However, from memory, and I use this as a memory thing, when I'm doing a border around a blanket or joining squares as well, I roughly use between 200 and 400 grams. That's not to say you need to, because what I will do, I will do one row of um, around the whole blanket once it's complete and then I'll say to anybody um, everybody out there who has more yarn head off on your own do yourself another um, skeins worth of borders of border rows if you will um, and join us back here and we will do the last skein with uh, the final border row you won't even need a skein for that you might even need half a skein 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 <laughs> so that's what I'll say with me, I will tell you how many rows that I have done so that you know how much yarn I use for that and how many rows you will need. I'm sorry. You will know how much yarn you will need for the amount of rows that I did at the end of the blanket. Now, I won't know that until we get to the end. So just get all your swatches done, pop them all in a plastic bag throughout the year, keep them nice and clean and locked away. Probably around mid-year, we might wash and block half of them. Then we'll pop them in a separate bag, nice, clean, don't touch them. <laughs> Get another bag for your next six months. But if you don't want to do that and you want to wash and block them all together, wait till November because we will hopefully, fingers crossed, have them all completed by, listen to me, fingers crossed, have them all completed by November so that we can wash and block them and get the rest of the blanket completed at the end of November. That's, you know, fingers crossed, yeah? Um, no, we shouldn't say that. We're definitely gonna do it, right? <laughs> so there you go, guys. I'm not gonna talk anymore. I'm just gonna let you get started uh, with your swatch. This swatch is, again, 25 grams. You'll need a five millimeter hook. You will need whatever color you have in stock. Now, these swatches will all be different colors, so get excited. This is one of them. That's one of them, and I have quite a few others. So get excited, guys, and I'm going to let you get on with your first swatch. Alrighty, guys, we are going to start off with a quick slip knot, and that's grabbing your tail end, wrapping it around your finger once and twice, holding it there and holding it there. That helps. Pass your back loop halfway over, hold it there. Pass the other loop all the way over, pop your hook in, and give it a tug. All right? So from here, guys, what we need to do, we're going to start off with chains. So it depends on the hook size you're using, your thread size, and the way you crochet to get the size of 20 centimetres, um, 20 centimetres, or roughly around 8 inches, okay? Yours truly is going to be chaining 25, okay? And we'll see after about 3 or 4 rows how you go. If you find that when you did chain your 25, it was far too much and it turned out to be about 12 inches or something. You don't want it too big because it's going to be roughly the same size unless you make all your other pieces the same size. Okay, so it doesn't really matter 
just try and stick to the same size or roughly around the same size for each swatch. If you're just doing today's swatch just for the sake of it and you're not doing a blanket, then just go ahead and chain your 25. Yarn over your hook, pull the loop through, one. Yarn over, two. Yarn over, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, stop singing, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Sorry guys, I do get a bit you know out of control sometimes i'm sorry about that chaining one and two now we're not going to include this stitch right here we're going to skip that and just go one two and three and what you're looking at is these loops right there okay and you're going to put your yarn over your hook and you're going to form a double crochet it's the main stitch in crochet so you're popping your hook in that loop right there all a loop through like so. Now you have one, two, three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through the last two. And I just want to show you, you don't have to pull your loop up, I just did that, sorry. Just wanted to show you what you just did. You formed a stitch. Now these two loops on top belong to the stitch that you just formed. Just before it, there's a couple of loops there. One and two. You can grab a stitch marker, a safety pin, a hairpin, whatever you've got in stock and just put your stitch marker, whatever it is, through those two loops. You've got two loops on top and one loop on the bottom right there. All right. That is the last stitch of this round. It's actually the first stitch. But when we come back, it'll be the last stitch you go into. You won't need to worry about that now. That's just for the newbies. A lot of our regulars would already know that now. Okay, so yarn over your hook and in every one of these little tiny loops you see here, you're going to do a double crochet. So your next loop is right there. Don't go back in here, okay, because you've already got a stitch in there. See that? You're going to jump straight into that very next loop, pop your hook in, pull a loop through, one, two, three, yarn over, pull through the two, yarn over, pull through the last two. Yarn over your hook next stitch in pull up a loop yarn over two yarn over two is that not super easy or what would you like a nice close-up let's get a nice little close-up oh is that too close <laughs> that's too close sorry guys i'm not doing well today am i all right so yarn over your hook this is for the newbies there's your little loop right there pop your hook in pull up your loop three loops yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two yarn over go straight into the very next stitch pull a loop through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two see how nice that's looking now have a careful look at it if yours looks like that then great if yours looks like there's two in one take it undone if yours looks like you've got a really big massive gap in between you might have missed a stitch all right so just take a good look at that and fix it now while you can in the meantime the rest of us are going to fly through this side okay For those of you who know me well will think hmm funny she didn't start with red how about that <laughs> <laughs> you all know that red is my favorite color and I use red to be my favorite color because of my experience experiences I should say in the 1980s not that I'm that old to remember those years <laughs> you like that one I got in quickly oh dear what do you do don't forget guys, we do have our uh, giveaway this week. If you are watching this video after the 22nd of January, you cannot enter the giveaway. But if you're watching it before the 22nd of January, you can enter the giveaway. I will leave a link to the giveaway in a description box down below. Once that uh, giveaway is finished, I will actually delete that link. All right. But in the meantime, if you see the link, click on it and go for it. 
all right we're almost there towards the end of the row and let's go like that so you can see there's a stitch right there and I believe there's one last see that little you can actually see the little tail there there's one last stitch to go into there like so now just be weary not to put two there it's it's tricky people think that part there is an extra stitch that is a knot okay so just be weary of that and you should have okay you should have let's count them quickly so you know you've got you know, actually the best way to count and don't count the way I do because it's very naughty <laughs> the best way to, to count your stitches is by counting these little V things that you see here okay so I'll show you what I mean that right there is one stitch there two three what I usually do is I count these posts and you, you shouldn't really because it doesn't always it's not always the posts, especially when you're doing double crochet two together. Okay, it can look like two posts, but one stitch. But this is just a normal stitching. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, and twenty-five. All right. So you should have twenty-four stitches. And your 25th one will be those three chains that we started off with in the beginning or two or three chains we started off with at the beginning all right so now this is a fun bit guys because this next row will be your repeat row so i'm going to show you from far away so you see what i do see that i'm going to turn my work okay you can turn your work this way or you can turn your work this way whichever way you, you want to just remain consistent the best way to do it is like turning your page in a book all right you read your book and you're turning your page that way unless you read your book the other way and then well that just confuses everybody <laughs> oh i had to say that didn't i sorry guys <laughs> all right so now that i showed you those little v's this is where you need to put your next row of stitches Ordinarily, I would chain up three and we do double crochets across. However, I want to keep straight edges, so I'm going to use my special single crochet stitch. All right, so what we're going to do, pop our hook in the stitch right there, and that's the two loops you see there. Pull a loop through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. And now there's two loops right here. Don't put your hook in that first loop, okay? Hold your thread, pop your hook in the second loop there, the side of it, pull a loop through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. And what you should have is that really tall stitch there and it's quite thick so it fills up a little space there. Okay, So not now but it'll fill that space up later when you do the next few rows. Grabbing your stitch marker, popping it in the top of those two loops there so you're putting them through both the loops stitch marker hair clip piece of thread doesn't matter whatever you have in stock all right yarn over your hook you're going to start your double crochets again and you are going to pop your double crochets in these little spaces you see tiny little space you see there between your post of your stitch and your actual stitch and you're going see those loops there that's a front loop and that's a back loop you're popping it through the stitch itself pull a loop through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two and that's your stitch you're going to do it again in the next stitch right there see the little stitches right there where you see those tiny little see-through holes right there that's the stitch all right super duper easy you know how to do double crochets because you did them in the previous round you've just got to make sure you get them in every stitch you come to now if you're joining us new take your time there's no rush okay i'm going a little bit fast for the newbies not so fast for the regulars and the intermediates um, so just take your time and if you want you can just meet us at the end of the row while we fly through this section okay so just keep going all the way across the row to super duper easy. All 
Alright, almost there, almost there. Alright, to the newbies, if you wanted to pause right now, because you're not near the end of the row, you can pause that right now and we'll wait for you. But for the rest of us, we're about to keep going. Okay, there. There's three stitches left, I think. Yep. One. Two. All right. So now when we get to this section right here, where our stitch marker is, and I've actually split the yarn, so I'm going to take my stitch marker out. But if you haven't split your yarn, you need to pop a double crochet in that um, stitch right there. So I'm going to have to take that out. I really have split it and it looks terrible. <gasps> it's terrible. So yarn over your hook, pop it in the stitch with your stitch marker. Now I'm struggling because I really did split that yarn. Dearie me. There we go. Pull your loop through like normal. No, still split it. It's still split. Let's try that. That's better. Pull your loop through like normal. Yarn over. Pull through two. Yarn over. Pull through the last two. And this is what you should have right there. Super gorgeous. See this row we just did? This is going to be your repeat row. So what I want you to do now, making sure that you are correct, count all your stitches. Really important to count all your stitches. And those stitches are these little Vs you are seeing right here. That is what you're counting. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Okay. So you're going to do the same thing over and over and over again until you get to, and let's grab our measuring tape here and put, pop it over there. And that's 20 centimeters or roughly nearly eight inches. So you literally have to get from there to there. So what you might do to help out a little bit, give you a rough idea of how many rows you might have to do. Okay, so there you go. Three and a half centimeters or about an inch and a half, almost an inch and a half. So just double it and so on and so on and so on and so on until you get to roughly um, the eight inches or the 20 centimeters. Um, mine will probably be about roughly 10 rows or 12 rows, around that much. Um, and then meet me back here once you have completed, get to your second last stitch and I'll show you what you need to do next. But what we're gonna do real quickly, I'll just start you off with your first row. All right, so you're not on your own and not left out in the lurch of some of our newbies. Just turning your work like normal, popping your single crochet in that first stitch, like so. Yes, remember, we're not going to that first loop there, but we're going into the second loop with another single crochet, like so. Remembering if you are new to crochet at the beginning and the end of each round or the beginning of each round I should say pop a little stitch marker in that stitch and that is under the two loops in between the two loops and one loop underneath. That's the actual stitch that we work in normally and then you do you skip that little space because you're already in there with your single crochets you go into that very next stitch and if you're not sure about the stitch just do yourself a favor and give that work a little stretch and you'll be able to see a little space up the top. That is where you are putting your double crochet. All right, so that's pretty basic. It's a very basic stitch here um, at Wow Crochet. We use the double crochet a lot in practically almost everything. So there you go. I say almost because we will be doing some single crochets and some half double crochets in swatches coming up soon. So get ready for those but in the meantime continue along in this manner until your work measures your eight inches or 20 centimeters meet me back here and i'll explain what we're going to do next you're looking at about 10 or 12 rows all right if you're using the same amount of yarn that i'm using and if if let me have a look see so i can have a look there you go if you have roughly the same amount of centimeters or the same amount of inches that I have there 
then just continue on for another 10 or 12 rows between 10 and 12 rows meet me back here probably after the 12th row roughly um, we'll say after the 10th row to be safe but um, after the 12th row and we shall talk about what you're going to do next all right so go ahead continue in that manner and I'll meet you back here in a moment Alrighty guys, here we are. Now I miscalculated that, didn't I? <laughs> I ended up doing another 13 rows. <laughs> However, altogether I did 15 rows, starting from the beginning to the very end, 15 rows of double crochets all the way across. And notice how gorgeously straight it is using that single crochet stitch along there. Gorgeous. Okay, so what we're going to do is pop our hook in our second last stitch. I asked you to get to the second last stitch at the end, which is where I am. And there's my little stitch marker. Pop our double crochet in our final stitch, like so. Take out that stitch marker. Sorry about that. Should have taken that out. I'm going to put the hook in. There you go. <laughs> and then just, whoops, pull a loop through, like as if you were chaining grabbing your little scissors okay pull that loop through oh I should have got you to measure yours first sorry guys whoops <laughs> my fault <laughs> okay measure your square before you cut it I had already measured it before so I knew it was exactly uh, 20 centimeters uh, but I will do it for you so you can have a quick look see that goes there and that goes there and let's blow it up so you can see all right so there it is 20 centimeters eight inches that kind of thing a little bit over 20 centimeters not too worried as long as it's close to 20 centimeters and this way it's probably a little bit bigger even look at that almost 21 centimeters oh it's so far away again sorry almost 21 and just a little bit over eight so i'm not really worried not at all because these are things that we can adjust towards the end of our swatches okay so you have now completed swatch number one and what we're going to do right now is we're going to weave in these two ends because uh, when we are ready to this is our beginning end by the way when we are ready to um, join our squares we need to wash and block them first not necessary if you do not want to wash and block you don't have to I do prefer to do that now either way doesn't matter where you weave your end in whether you weave it this way or whether you weave it that way it doesn't matter because it's going to be sewn together or crocheted I haven't decided it might be crocheted actually I'm thinking contrast color I'm not sure yet I'll think about it <laughs> I don't know why I'm whispering <laughs> um, so you can do it either way because either way it's going to be crocheted over okay so what I might do is just find the side stitches I think not so much the first row we did but the side stitches and just split some stitches on the sides there not necessary this part I just like doing it because it will be so difficult for that to come undone if you are splitting when I say splitting you're not putting it in a stitch itself you're putting it between the yarns and this is actually a no-no through crochet a lot of people don't like doing that because it would be difficult to take undone in some cases you literally have to cut your work to get it undone so if you don't want to do that uh, by all means don't but to me I know this is all correct I checked it before I came on air um, but if you haven't checked it you need to check it before doing a stitch like this now you're going to you've gone this way now you're going to go in a different area and you're going to go backwards but all in a different area and notice how I'm doing it at the back rather than the front where we worked this way we started there we went across when we turned around this part here and did our double crochets here that will be classified as our front and what we're going to do if it helps before we finish that just pop a stitch marker in one of the stitches it doesn't matter which one and just pop it around your stitch like so so you know that this is the front of your work it doesn't matter I will show you again all right so oh, there we go I'll show you hello when we're ready to crochet these pieces together I'll show you again so that's gone this way once this way twice I'm going to go back a third time why because my regulars will know me as being a stickler for weaving in ends and we're just going to go back the other way like so and then all you're going to do is grab your scissors 
give it a cut. Try not to cut your work, of course. And that's your first end gone. Okay. And you can't tell that you've weaved it along the sides. All right. Now you get your other end as well. And we're doing exactly the same. You can again weave it any way you like. There we go. All in. I would have weaved it across the top. I would have actually left it and crocheted over it and then weaved it at the back. But for the sake of the swatches that are going to be locked away in a bag for, you know, 10 months, we want to make sure everything's neat and tidy when we do start. So again, you can start anywhere you'd like. I'm going to pop mine down the side again. May as well stay consistent, yeah? It doesn't really matter. There's no right or wrong way of weaving in ends. Everybody's ways are different, um, but this is just one way. Okay, try not to pull it too tight because you don't want that to happen. Okay, you, you want it to be nice and straight like the rest of our work. And again, finding some stitches that you can split like that. Plenty of stitches there to split. You don't want to go too far. I might have left that too loose there. Check that out. Look at that right there. Well, it's not too bad. I'm going to go through that. Going back the other way, like so. Again, different areas, of course, because you don't want to unravel what you just did. It doesn't make any sense, does it? <laughs> All right. And don't stress about how differently it looks at the back, because that back is going to be covered with stitches, firstly, and it's at the back. Okay. So now you can cut this end as well. Personally, I won't be weaving in all these ends. I just wanted to show you how to do this for now. Oh, I probably will. <laughs> I probably will. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Oh, by the way, you can take that stitch marker out if you want. But leave this one right here. If you are new and you're not sure, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter because you're going to be washing and blocking. Take it out. <laughs> Get it right, Mary. So there you go. That is square number one, or should I say swatch number one now if yours is a little bit wonky and not laying flat that might just be that you're new to crochet and you probably need to get a bit more practice but once you wash and block it it does straighten up so if you can see a tiny little dip there that's from crocheting a little too tight already it's a bit straight okay so it happens don't stress so leave it like this guys and join me one moment so you can see exactly what we're going to do with our swatch Ta -da! <laughs> and here it is guys finally finished our first swatch yay of 2021 we still have another mm, 24 more swatches to go and 11 months to do it in <laughs> or i should say 10 and a half months because the last month is going to be putting it all together and popping a few rows of border on it and maybe a nice little row at the end so there you go in the meantime grab your little swatch pop it inside some sort of plastic um, material whatever you have inside a bag keeping it clean and keeping it all in one spot so you don't lose it otherwise you'll have to do another swatch won't you <laughs> there's your swatch I'm popping it in the tub and inside the tub I have the crochet hook the scissors the two stitch markers and the darning needle the sewing needle you don't have to put them all together in the tub I've just popped them there because well at least I can find them <laughs> So that's where it's going to be. Now you actually can just at least pop all the uh, swatches you make in the one bag at least. If you can't keep your hook and needle and, and scissors together, pop all the swatches in the one bag. Now tonight I'll be typing out the pattern to this swatch and popping it inside the tub as well. It will be inside a manila folder or some sort of folder with um, little plastic strips as well so that I can keep the pattern together with the project. This is actually, while we're here in the conversation, going to be a new thing here at Wow Crochet. All of our patterns will be written up and they will be uploaded on a website when our website is complete and we are short week away, maybe a week and a half, maybe two, literally the most away from completing the website. Get too excited because I am. When the website is complete, I will let you know and you can already start to see one or two patterns for free on the website. Not all of them, there'll be one or two patterns at the moment. And every week, one more pattern will go up. 
okay? Some will be paid and some will be free, but there will always be patterns on the website. So get excited, guys. When that website is done, I will let you all know, which is hmm, very, very close. This close. So there you have it. That's it, guys. That's all I want to say about the blanket. Get excited because I am, and I know that the swatch blanket is going to be gorgeous. I'm sorry, did I say the word gorgeous again? <laughs> <laughs> to my regulars, I'm sorry. To my newbies, hey, I'm not sorry. This is a word I use all the time. <laughs> don't forget, guys, we are doing our swatch for the year. This is our very first one. And don't forget to join us uh, probably midweek next week for swatch number two, or it might be Monday or Tuesday of next week for swatch number two. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and all those wonderful things that you guys pretty much already do for me. <laughs> and all I want to say right now is... Ah, swatch number one is done. Ciao for now.